good day. Today we're going to be looking at how to use the content center in the creation of parts used in an assembly. In a previous video I created this handle hub uh, as part of our work planes and holes uh, feature video and we're just utilizing, we opened up a, an assembly model and I just used the place and I'm going to place the component into our assembly. And so I'm going to only need one of these. And so zoom out, locate it, locate it. And it's going to ask us to continue to make more and more. We only need one, so I'll right mouse click and say okie dokie. Okay, so now we've got the handle hub. Now we've also got a work plane that's still turned on. We're going to go ahead and hit the plus sign under the browser bar, go to work plane, and turn that work plane visibility off. So now we've got the handle hub, and I'm going to need to get a content center part to fit for the set screw. Now we know the length of the hole is about 1.6 inches deep. And that's from the base of the counter bore. And so we're going to need a, a bolt that is going to be about 1.75 inches deep. Uh, the 1.5 will be long enough to actually hold the shaft in place. So we're going to need to, to locate a, a set screw that's going to be about 1.75. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and use the place. And under the place, using the down arrow, we can go and place from content center. Now, Content Center is also controlled from the vault, so if you decided not to install the vault as part of your Inventor Professional install, then Content Center wor will not work either. So you need to install the vault and the Content Center. If you didn't, then what you need to do is head over to your Control Panel, your Remove Programs, and then choose your Inventor Professional 2015 and do a change. And that will allow you to change and add the vault as an install and it should install the vault tools and Content Center for you specifically. So inside the Content Center we have a series of specific features that we can choose to help us create parts that are already created or help us place parts that are already created and these parts are standard stock parts that you could pick up from a variety of different vendors that could be like a car lane or an MSC and so the idea is that you can use their websites also as a research guide to help you find the specific style of component you're looking for and then located inside the content center. Well today what we're going to be focusing on is fasteners but as you can see we've got cable and harness connectors we've got a variety of different fasteners nuts, bolts, pins, rivets we can do mold making components which have cooling injectors and inserts and slide components um, you've got a variety of generic parts like caps and clamps and drill bushings and o-rings and plugs that you can use, shaft parts, bearing, bearing blocks, collars, shims, thrust, thrust washers, um, and even structural shapes like steel I-beams and tubing that you can apply. The tube and pipe focuses on conduits and different types of fittings so in essence you can do a mechatronic design using inventor of having both electronics and uh, the mechanical components especially with the cable and harness because you could actually make flat wire cables and wiring harnesses and make them realistic and know how many, what the linear footage of wire you're going to need uh, and the types of connectors that you might have and so forth 
but today we're really focusing on bolts and what we're going to do is we're going to use a hex head no uh, let's see here no we're going to use a socket head for this particular operation now why a socket head well the socket head is going to use basically an allen wrench to tighten it down as opposed to trying to get a uh, socket into the hole we're going to use a socket head cap screw now when you open this up you'll go oh my gosh well take a deep breath because there's a variety of different styles first off you need to remember that there's a variety of different manufacturers and needs around the world and so there's metric bolts there's bolts that are DIN based which is Germany based um, there's a variety of different locations now the ones that we typically use in the United States are ones that focus on reading the name so if you can read the name as opposed to uh, screw GB slash T GB would be Chinese uh, for a manufacturer if you can read the name then that's usable within the United States so spline socket head cap screw inch but I've got a hexagon hexagon socket head cap screw inch here now there should also be metric ones and there are up on the row above there's a Ford socket head cap screw metric so I could do it as either metric or English however if you remember we tapped the that hole as a one quarter twenty so we're gonna need to make a hexagon caps a hexagon socket head cap screw as a one quarter twenty so that's the best advice that I can provide look for the names that you can read those are the ones that you can use that would be typically available through MSC or car lane as a supply uh, location so we're going to go ahead and choose double click on the hexagon cap screw or you can single click highlight it and choose OK either way will get you to the next step and so the next step is that it actually starts to bring in this cap screw but I'm not I'm not too worried at this point about the size because the size of the cap screw is almost as big as our part but what I am interested in is does it look like the right cap screw does it have the right head shape does it have the allen wrench socket that I need to tighten and or loosen absolutely so we're going to go ahead and left mouse click and locate it because the next step is now we're going to need to select the size and so we know that the nominal thread description is going to be a one quarter inch so it's going to be threaded as one quarter now the diff the issue comes in what can I purchase this as and as we kind of mentioned earlier the, we know that it took about 1.6 inches to drill all the way in now we can try a 1.5 insert it see if it actually does seat past the sidewall to hold the shaft in place if it doesn't then we'll have to go to a 1.75 in either case we can go ahead and try that now there's UNC and UNF it, we made it as a one quarter UNC which is unified national course now fine threading basically allows for a higher vibration environment you'll have less back out of the threads from vibration or other movement um, and again standard those are both standard selections if you pick something non-standard meaning if we wanted to make it 1.6 inches long then that would be a custom part could we design it absolutely but then we'd have to send it out to get it manufactured probably not too cost effective we'll choose OK to test the 1.5 so now it's actually taking the database and building the part for us because it didn't have the part in memory it doesn't have any of the content center parts in memory it has a database of all the material information and it literally creates the model as you select it we'll go ahead and left mouse click and locate it I only need one so we're gonna right mouse click and choose OK so the next step is is that I need to seat this okay I need to seat the head of 
the cap screw to the base of the counter bore. To do that, I'm going to use the insert constraint. So we'll pick constraint and insert. And I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. So I picked insert. I'm going to go ahead and select the screw. And notice where I'm selecting. I'm selecting at the base of the head. And I'm going to select here at the base of the counter bore. You'll also notice that the arrows, if the edge axis factor, is opposite. You'll notice that there's an arrow on the... Let me tilt this just a hair so you can see it. You'll see that the arrow is pointing outwards and the other arrow is pointing inwards. That means that they'll insert together. Okay. So when we look at this, the cat of the cap screw is almost perfect. Now, here's the real test. Can we see the end of the screw in the space? Absolutely. So 1.5 inch distance is going to be more than enough. So actually the head of the screw is going to be backed out a little bit outside of the part. If you wanted to make it flush, we'd have to change the size of the part diameter. That may not be possible depending upon the application. Uh, we could try to go a smaller at a 1.25, I believe is the next one down. So if we choose OK, and now I can edit this. I just right mouse clicked and edit the cap screw. And hang on here. Let me return. And I want to go to the cap screw. I want to re change the size of the cap screw. I just wanted to see if it's possible because the next size down is 1.25. We'll see if it fits. We'll choose 1.25. We'll choose OK. Notice that I don't have to do anything. I just changed the size, the length of the cap screw. Again, we're going to test it to see if we can see it. We cannot. It does not go far enough. It's probably close, but not exact. So in essence, we will need to change the size again. What I did is went to the browser bar, right mouse click, change size, left mouse click, and I'll change it back to the inch and a half. And so when it's actually assembled, the, the head of the cap screw will stick out a little bit, probably about a tenth of an inch. Um, it'll be the distance that we have here out there. So it's just unfortunate, but based on the size, I don't want to make a custom part. It would be too expensive. So that's how you take a part from the content center and apply the part from a content center in an existing assembly model. Have a great day and look forward to seeing you soon.